Hey folks, it's Carrie here. I am doing yet another Full Tilt Friday. This time a suggestion was made to me that I detail some of the activities I've been up to over the last few months. Since the beginning of the pandemic, I arrived in Vancouver and from March up through the end of August, I have been in Vancouver the whole time six months straight. Usually I'm flying to different places, I'm working, I'm visiting, I'm doing things out in nature, going on adventures, and I had done nothing except stay in Vancouver and run several thousand miles during that time. So at the end of September, I had an opportunity to jump up to go and stack up some things in the U.S. that would make it worthwhile for me to spend time there, and then come back and justify the two-week quarantine that I'm currently enduring here, where I can't leave my apartment essentially for two weeks. It's been 10 days. I got back just at the, at the end of November. But for three months, I've been out and about, and I wanted to share with you some of the things that I had done, very much staying in line with my philosophy of approaching things full tilt. So... I'm going to do that by sharing my screen with you and just showing you some of the action and activities that, I, that I've done. So uh, this is also an experiment. I'm using some different software to stream this, which I'll then upload afterwards, but it'll allow me to help share the screen as well. So this is my timeline, and this kind of shows 2020, the year. Uh, and I can go in a little greater detail and go in and say, okay, so September, I was pretty much around Portland. You see me over here in Wyoming, all around Colorado, San Francisco, Las Vegas. In October, I uh, continued that. All the little red dots are places I have been and spent time, and we'll go over some of those places as you can actually uh, see them and catch up with me. November, we continued the trend of a lot of travel in the Southwest, and you can see it brought me back up to Vancouver. So that's the, that's the, the ground that we've covered. Um, first day that I left, I actually flew out. What I'm going to do is just share pictures with you as we go. So this is uh, the first, this is the airport, totally empty at YVR, not what I'm used to at all. And flying to Portland. As a Canadian, I can't drive across the border. It's non-essential travel, but I can fly across the border. Uh, and airports are empty. Planes are maybe a little less empty, but they give you this nice kit of, of things to keep yourself safe, hand sanitizer and masks and earbuds and things like that. And I flew to Portland where I met my friend Doug here and my buddy Dax. And Doug and Dax were planning to go out and do the Timberline Trail the next day. So this was on the 3rd of September that we would go out. So the next day we took off, it really was sort of in the middle of the night we took off. Um, before we left, we filmed a little bit of a video. Doug is a video artist as well. And both Doug and Dax, my friends, are world-class dancers. So they were doing a little bit of a video. We put on green suits and tried to do some special effect things like green screen for uh, <laughs> editing in After Effects. That night, Doug, who'd never done a ultra length effort, wanted to go around Timberline Trail. And the Timberline Trail is this trail around Mount Hood. And this is, we're sort of jumping around here. I'm not sure why we did that, but we took off in the middle of the night. And Dax and I have both done some long distance runs, 200 milers and that sort of thing. And I had gotten Dax into ultras. I got Doug into ultras. And we took him out intending to take maybe 24 hours to cover the about 40 miles to get around Mount Hood. So we started and Doug actually survived the, the adventure quite nicely. And he's putting together with me a video of the whole experience, which I'll release before too long. It's a new newbie's... <laughs> experience going out and doing 40 some miles, which would more than triple his longest effort to date um, around Mount Hood with Dax and I. So 
we went around, we saw some pretty amazing sights as we went. We flew the drone a couple times to put it up there and we found this cave here. I'll show, I'll show this to you real, real quick. This cave was the coolest place I have seen in a long time. This river, which comes down out of the top of that, basically melted away this huge deep cavern and you could climb in it and go through it. So that was, I think, my favorite spot that we saw on there. And as we went through, we got into high alpine and this is all sort of a 24 hour effort. There were amazing flowers and bloom in certain places and Doug actually finished. Yay, video to come. Next day, we went back and uh, loaded up his trailer and truck and we took off to go out to the Black Rock Desert. We left Dax and his family at Doug's place here and we headed off into the sunset. On the way, we, I, at night, driving his truck in the middle of nowhere, struck a the edge of a cow that was in the middle of a curvy road at night. A black cow could not see it up to the very last minute in the middle of the road, could not swerve the truck around it. And it basically did a little damage on the front and then evacuated its bowels all over the whole side of the thing. So that was kind of a grim situation, but truck was runnable and we continued onwards to meet some friends out at the Black Rock Desert. Now normally Burning Man is happening there, but this time it was not. So normally at this time of year, 70, 80,000 people. I've been out there the last 10 years. This would have been the 11th year, but it did not happen. So we ended up camping with a few friends who've been quite careful. I met one of my old climbing buddies there who came out the next day. This is uh, Doug Staup, who runs IceAxe.tv and is has been to the Antarctic almost 50 times and been to the North Pole almost 20 times. So the dude is probably the most experienced polar explorer that there is in the world at the moment. Uh, anyway, old climbing buddy, he came out. We spent a bit of time with him afterwards. We ended up walking around the ply, which is very sparsely attended this year. A few people out here and there, a little bit of artwork, we ran into other other friends. There was a, a group who came out. You could actually land planes on the playa, which you can't normally do. There were dust storms, as there often are, which goes hand in hand with the mask culture, which was pretty good out there. You can see how much dust would actually gather on my legs and my arms while I was out there. It was just absolutely covered with this fine playa dust. Uh, the next day after we got together, we went out, we explored, we visited all sorts of different camps. Someone built a little tiny Burning Man out there, which we played with and had some fun doing various poses and things. I think this, this might be one of my favorite type shots of, of that out there with my good friend, Bonnie Morgan. Her and her dad, Gary, are friends of mine for many decades and I've spent a good bit of time with them. So going through that. Then we, we met some other friends. We built some cool, some of you, if you follow my Instagram, have probably seen this picture, but here's the thing actually being built, the five stack here that we, we built with Justin, Brandon, Gary, and Bonnie with me on the bottom of that thing. So I've missed being able to do things like that. Uh, we, we had a little concert on the back of a friend's RV that night, our, our pal Greg played music for us, original music. There was a little bit of, of dancing and fun that happened out there. And then we went the next day out and and did some, oh, <laughs> here's, here's Greg doing this thing. I don't know if you'll be able to hear the actual music or not that comes through, but it's very, very entertaining. Fuck you! <laughs> that was the back of the camper. Very fun, very cool. But the next day, I got down to business. The Burning Man Ultra Marathon happens every year. I've done it eight times. This year, I was determined to go out and run the 50 kilometers. And 
do some Strava art while I was doing that. So I did that. My backpack and GoPro got taken out in the middle of it and disappeared. That's a video that I've got finished as well that is uh, going to be shown before too long. It'll be um, posted. It's actually being potentially put into a film festival, but we'll see if it makes it or not. I'll put it out on YouTube regardless. Uh, but I made this massive piece of Strava art that is 50 kilometers long out on the playa. And that night we went out again, did some various things. This is going to take forever if I go this slow through things. So I'm going to accelerate through. The next day we took off. We went to Lake Tahoe to visit my buddy Doug. We went out paddle boarding on, the, uh, on Lake Tahoe. And then that evening drove to LA where I stayed with the Morgans for a little bit of time and had some various runs while I was at the, oh, we visited uh, some of our friends who had just been out the playa doing various art and things. We went out and did a skateboard, rollerblade, bomb through Venice, California, up to Malibu and back, uh, just having fun with, with the group and had some dinner with some very dear friends on the way back. The next day went running in a park with my friend Miles. Um, the next day we, I took off to uh, Salt Lake City. So I was on a plane for Salt Lake City after a couple days in LA and I got picked up by my friends Carrie and Sam to go to the Snake River and the Grand Tetons in Wyoming. So we went out and visited Soda Springs. That was where we spent the night one night. And the next day went out, rented little rubber kayaks, these orange things here, and paddled the Snake River, which was a bunch of fun, uh, going through the rapids in various places like that. Next day we were in Jackson, staying with a friend of Sam's. We prepared, oh yeah, and that evening we went out to Hot Springs on the Snake River. You can see this night picture here of us all out there. Visited the giant antler fest of the park in the middle of Jackson. And the next day we climbed the Grand Tetons, which will be another video uh, I used since my GoPro had disappeared on the playa, I used a friend's which had this broken lens and we ended up doing a route from the bottom to all the way up to the top of the Grand Tetons. It's sort of a mixed route on snow and rock climbing and it had cleared up but it was, and it was a nice day. So we managed to get to the top of that and back down. The next day we drove to Salt Lake City in Salt Lake City, I was picked up by my friend Dax. We immediately drove to Moab where I visited a high school friend briefly and also named Carrie. And she uh, had a quick little meeting with us with her daughters. And we drove to Durango and met Mike McKnight and Ben Light. And we saw him start his effort at making the fastest known time on the Colorado Trail. This is another thing. I was with him intermittently for a few different times. I'll have a video on that as well coming up. Uh, the Colorado Trail, Dax started with his pacing first and um, I ended up driving to the next station. The next morning I jumped in after Kyle Curtin had run Mike through the night and I took off with him and we took we went to Stony Pass through the most absurdly picturesque places ever. These were big log jams that had come down. Again, this will be a video that I'll be able to share at some point. It might be a little bit of a long one showing the support uh, on Mike's Colorado trail effort. Weren't sure how it was all going to go here, so I wasn't sure how long I'd be with them. Dax was only there for a few days and I, I ended up um, coming back in several times during his effort because he had this crew with him led by Ben Light. So I didn't need to run all the different components. So I ran him to Stony Pass. We went and visited the Hard Rock Endurance Run starting line in Silverton. 
and then took off. We were camping in, in top of these uh, pop-up tents that Mike and Ben had. Uh, the next day, there was another pacing session. Uh, Dax did another pacing session, and I visited some friends in Paonia, Colorado, who I hadn't seen in a long time. They had a little family get-together, which was kind of nice. Um, the next day, drove back out through Black Canyon, which is an amazing part of Colorado I'd never actually been to. It's just fantastically picturesque and a cool place to get a hike or a run in. Um, and then rejoined them again on the Colorado Trail. This time I did another section with him. And let me see what that section was called. It was... Ah, yeah. It was uh, Chalk Creek and then Mount Massive. So I did a couple sections with him, bumping into an ultra runner friend of mine, Julio Angel's buddy, out in the middle of nowhere on these trails. They were trying to do 14,000 foot peaks. Uh, I also, after running him through the night there, took off the next day and we were gonna go and visit uh, Conundrum Hot Springs near Aspen. But instead we visited, so John, my buddy, John Novak jumped in and we went to Crested Butte and got a phone call the phone call was about having a, I want to put you on pause. We stopped in Crested Butte and got a note from Ben, Mike's crew chief, that they needed pacing immediately. So we were going to do Cun and Drum, but we instead turned around and drove back to meet Mike and crew one more time. Uh, we connected with them in... Breckenridge and then Mike and I jumped on the trail and we did another another section which uh, took us into the night he about lost it in the middle of the night he was dying tired but his family also showed up at that point so uh, but this was the fifth night he'd been out and I thought if he got through that it's a good chance he's gonna make it the next day early morning John and I took off and we drove to Aspen and I'd heard about this place, uh, Conundrum Creek Hot Springs. And we did a hike. John came with me about four miles, and then I ran the rest of the way up. It was about an 18-mile round trip to this beautiful hot spring, the highest one, like 11,500 feet in, uh, in the U.S., I think. And it was gorgeous. I had this little one to myself for a while, and I went and I joined some other folks in a bigger one here, which you can see, and had a super quality day. Such a good destination. It was perfect weather, fall weather, kind of cool, good for running, and nice to get into the hot springs too. Toured around Aspen for a little while, a place I used to live. Um, then we went to Woody Creek Tavern, place where Hunter S. Thompson used to go. It used to, when I, when I lived in Aspen, this was a place I'd go every now and then, visit an old friend in Basalt who lives there in the Wildcat Ranch, my buddy Rob. Uh, next day, we went back out and met the crew one more time to do another pacing stint. And uh, I took off with him in the middle of the night and rode him through the night. That was a tough one just to keep him going and into the morning again. Uh, his knee was hurting him a good bit at this point. So we, we ended up making pretty good time. We met another couple friends of his on the trails, a guy he coaches. Um, and Golden Harper, uh, who we knew from working at Ultra. And uh, then I went to Denver, saw a buddy of mine, Erica, who lived in Denver for a quick walk and then ran out with Golden to meet him at the finish of the Colorado Trail, which he, big newsflash, he broke the record, which was eight days and five hours, and he did it in seven days and 13 hours. So like I say, that'll be a pretty long video that I'll do at some point. The next day I was invited to go out elk hunting, went back to uh, Paonia. We left super early. We slept at Golden's place in Denver for maybe two, three hours. And then we drove there, drove out with my buddy Matthew and his brother-in-law, Yuri, who is the guide and elk hunter. Um, we hiked up quite a ways and set up camp in the Chain Mountains 
and went out doing a little bit of uh, exploring and reconnoitering to figure out where they might be. There was a place that he, he wanted to find that Yuri had scoped out where he thought there would be elk. And we were actually quite close to them for a little while. And the next day, the next morning, but we didn't, we didn't find it. He was at full draw at one point, but never, never loosed an arrow because it wasn't quite the right shot. So we went out the next day and basically took the whole day cruising around, listening to these things, bugling, making noises. We found, we, we were back where there was no, no one, like absolutely nobody. It's public land, but there was nobody back there because it's a long hike to get out there, really rough terrain up and down. We found this rack from uh, a elk that had somehow died back there at some point. Uh, we camped the next morning, took off, and went and practiced with the compound bow a little bit. I w was able to, to take a couple shots, which was like a totally new thing for me. And I'm amazed how accurate these things are. I was able to put a couple right there. <laughs> There's my target. First couple shots that I that I took with the compound bow. So I was kind of happy with that. Uh, and then we drove. We stopped in Vegas and visited my friend Rianne. We had some Ethiopian food and then drove to LA. Next day, I uh, went out for a run again in Franklin and Fryman Canyons. We uh, were able to go out and have a, there was sort of a, a family housewarming pizza party that uh, the Morgans had that we went to. And I ended up, the next day was, was about the first day of the trip. This is three weeks in now where I had a fairly easy day. We went and did a couple things around town, got uh, some stuff in Westwood, but the places closed down much more than Canada was. So things are at that point were shut down, but not too bad. Went out with my buddy Miles. We went on a run um, up to um, Verdugo Hills, had a nice 10 mile run. And I, at that point, took my first COVID test. It was a blood test that we gotten through the Morgans. This is the test result here. That's the control line. That's where my blood went. That's where the agent went. This would indicate here antibodies. This would indicate COVID and I was clean, which was good. So after that, felt a little bit more comfortable interacting with people. Uh, had a outdoor movie night in the, uh, in the pool with uh, some friends. We watched uh, a movie from the pool, which was heated to about 90 degrees and did pizza back at the castle. Next day we took out the Shea, which is this fantastic old car that, that Bonnie has. And we drove around, did some errands, went to Home Depot, the 99 cent store. Following day, we went rock climbing uh, out at Stony Point at night. And the day after, again, met with my buddy, Roberto, who I used to work with, uh, and we had some good lunch. My buddy, Justin, came down and went. We spent a bit of time with him at the Petit Hermitage Hotel. This is Martin, the world's, som it's a water somnalia. So he's trading water with them, and Justin and I, drank some uh, kava water that we had gotten in Fiji. The kava is like this brown juice, like dirt water. Um, and we had a, a night there being able to listen to music. My buddy Miles here uh, was playing with uh, a couple others, uh, Luca Pino and, uh, and we had a nice night outdoors on the roof deck. Listen to some very fine nice treat sort of getting out to do that. Next day, hung out with Justin on the roof. Morgan's bird came along, Peaky, and Peaky, who's usually my <laughs> mortal enemy, came out and spent good time with me. We visited my buddy, uh, Zach, who has a taco restaurant that he's just opened. They did takeout, and we saw Toledo at the rooftop again that evening. Um, 
and got, oh yeah, we went into the pool, we played at night, we built three highs. That's uh, Gary in the middle, Bonnie on top, and me on the bottom. That was kind of a, a fun time as well. We, I yes, the bird came out again the next day. Uh, I went out with Miles and we did a night run up uh, to the top of Price um, Mountain, I think. I found a, a uh, yeah, Mount Low. We found, I found a watch, a Casio calculator watch. And this picture was taken in moonlight, just moonlight. The shadow is moonlight. It was so dark you could barely see, but this is the Pixel uh, phone, which I've got. Uh, this right here, which works phenomenally well with its night vision. So that's uh, not high resolution, but considering there was zero light, that was an impressive shot. Um, we got some nice views of LA. I got to climb a tower and enjoy a little bit more of a view. Uh, the next day we did Eaton Canyon. Uh, with Alec and Danica. It's a slot canyon in LA. We had to get a reservation to get in there. It's a hot day. Alec about died trying to get up the hill, but he got through. As soon as he was up the hill, it was no problem. It was Danica's first time in a slot canyon, so there were some moments that were kind of spicy for her where she was getting quite nervous about the things that needed to happen. Like, this is her trying to slide down maybe a 10 or 15 foot slide into the water and getting a little freaked out about it. Oh, don't do that. Just slide until, down. Until she actually just slid it. So this is a, sort of a big moment for her to, to drop in and wrap out, wrap out, wrap out until we finally got out to the last waterfall. And then we, of course, tied up onto the bridge on the way out and wrapped that and got some tea on the way out at a boba place. I met my buddy Morgan the next day. He showed me his new studio. We went out rock climbing again. Uh, and the next day I met my buddy Jeremy. I found very fortuitously this album which at one point I had owned and thrown away, not thrown away, but sold to a vinyl store just found it randomly in this alleyway um, walking with Jeremy. I'm like, I cannot believe this is, this is, I found this particular album. So I was pretty excited about that. Um, that evening I went and visited with my pal Tony in Santa Monica and we went for another skateboard ride around uh, LA and Venice. NBA finals were going on. People were watching it outside, socially distanced and we did a little uh, dancing on the way back. Um, the next day, I watched uh, Joshua Cheptegi break the world's record on live in, I think it was Valencia, Spain. Yeah. And that was the 10K in 2611. F unbelievable time. Um, that night, we set up a hot tub outdoor movie. We watched the Matador from the hot tub, which was fantastic. A nice time indeed. And I, what else happened then? Ah, then John and I uh, drove to Las Vegas. We were in Vegas, we went to the Pinball Hall of Fame. Uh, we visited with my friend Tony and his daughter. Uh, we had a nice dinner and we continued on to uh, that morning take a hike with our friend Rianne and her dog Walter in Icebox Canyon, which was pretty cool. And then John and I took off and went to back <laughs> out to the Moab 240, where at the Indian Creek aid station, which Mike and Ben were supposed to run, but only Mike could come out. Ben had a COVID issue he had to deal with in his family. So we went out and helped out at that aid station <clears throat> saw uh, Mickey Graglia or Michelle Graglia and uh, David Goggins come through here. Then I had a bit of a sleep because I was going to be pacing my friend Wes who ended up being in distress and not being able to eat or drink much. But uh, after we crewed, I did a quick interview with Mike, which is up right now on the Full Tilt Friday. 
It's talked about his whole Colorado Trail experience. We stopped at Newspaper Rock on the way out, and then I met Wes here in, see, he's not looking at his greatest at this point, because he hasn't been able to really eat or drink for almost a day and a half, and I'm picking him up and thinking he's going to be moving pretty, pretty, pretty well quickly, but it just not, it ended up not being his race because he couldn't eat. I love this sign. Friendly dog, Sunny, might bark out in the middle of nowhere. There's one cabin. <laughs> it's somebody who wants people to know that his dog is friendly. Don't worry if Sunny barks. Uh, so there's Wes. Ran him through a few sections. Got him into um, a, a position where I... This is the him running along with the first place woman who finished in, in first. Uh, Wes was hoping to finish probably podium and improve his time of 62 hours from last year. I think the winner this year won it in 60, just under 60 or something like that. But Wes should have been right there in the mix, but without the ability to process calories or water, that was a problem. So I found him another pacer for the last section and took off. We saw the finish, I visited Candice at the finish and Scott Rokas, which was fantastic. And there's Mickey, the actual winner who, who came in Next morning, well, actually, we took off that night, drove through the night, and we ended up at Sand Mountain State Park. And I, as we as we were driving past, I thought, oh, my God, look at that thing. We have to go out there. The sun was just coming up. So this was the very first rays of sunshine up on top of this sand dune, which is hundreds of feet high. And I ended up climbing up it and flying the drone. Nobody is up there. Normally, it's all sorts of off-road vehicles, but nobody was up there. So I got up there, took some nice pictures, flew the drone. My drone landed itself for an emergency landing. It took me a long time of running all of these dang dunes, filling my shoes up with sand to find it again. Then we went to Reno, visited my buddy Scott at Sparks Metal Crafters, his dog Hank. He happened to be making these uh, decorative wrench uh, for LA Busa's, who's a Suki High Busa group that I, that I, that I know. And he happened to be making them as I came in, which was kind of cool. We had a quick visit. I connected with my family who'd come down. We visited. They've got a bearded dragon. They got a albina ball python. The neighbors had a tortoise. We went out in the side by side. It was uh, John's birthday. So we ended up uh, jumping in the side by side, going up into the mountains. Indigo got a chance to drive. John got a chance to drive. I got a chance to drive. It was a blast. There's Basket Kitty who was on the table avoiding Hank the giant pit bull. Uh, we got pizza and a birthday cake that night and celebrated with them. My lovely wife actually entertained having the bearded dragon on for a bit. Uh, and that night we were staying in Reno at a uh, big casino. We had a suite which was kind of nice. And uh, the next day we I spent going for a bit of a run, spending a bit of time with my lovely bride and daughter, visited the homeless encampments way up and down the, uh, the river, the Truckee River in the middle of Reno, which was kind of shocking. Saw some Burning Man art that we'd seen other years at Burning Man, that's the space whale that was at center camp, and had dinner with Uncle Fred, who lives in Reno and hadn't been out to eat for more than six months. This is Michael Benesty's Broken But Together sculpture, which the last saw in the playa. That huge, giant-sized polar bear was there as well. So I wanted to go and see some of the artwork. This Believe, this huge uh, sculpture was also there. I forgot the artist's name, forgive me. But they had a lot of Burning Man art that was there at in Reno, which was fantastic to see. Uh, next morning, got up early, went out side by side again with my with my pal. We played in the bathtub and then took off driving south towards Havasu and stopping in Vegas on the way uh, for, again, a meal at our Ethiopian restaurant. And we stayed at, on the Strip for a couple nights, spent a bit of time walking around. This is October, I don't know what the date is. Oh, met my good friend Chuck, 
played a little pinball again at the Pinball Hall of Fame, went out and continued on to Lake Havasu where my wife wanted to spend her 50th birthday. Indigo and I went on a hike to Dead Burrow Canyon, which was a pretty remote hike out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, a big loop, which we did. It's quite hot, but we survived it and went back. London Bridge was there. My friend Erica, who I'd met earlier in Denver, happened to be flying out to participate in a weird aviation event. So we, we met up with her. Um, we walked around. The aviation event is these fighter, fighter planes come out, the training fighter planes come out, and they basically do mini war games. And I ended up going out to the drop zone, which is a place where these tarps are laid out as a convoy. The two planes, which you can see there, come in, they drop bags. This is their close-up pass they for the photographer. Ooh, wow. yeah, check they, that out. Uh, represent bombs that then get, they hit, you can see the marks that they make in various places, and they're just basically tossing them out at you. And there's a photographer and a scorekeeper. Never seen anything like it. It's out in the middle of nowhere in the desert and ended up um, watching them for, for quite a while make their passes and coming by and dropping these these flower bombs onto Oh my word! There they are dropping. This is what he threw right here. Flower bombs that didn't actually explode. Most of them do. So that was something new for me that I'd never seen before. Uh, let's see. The next day we uh, spent in Lake Havasu, it was my wife's birthday, so we went out to a fancy dinner, we had a nice walk. Next day I had friends come out, uh, Rianne and Katie, and we did some paddle boarding around the London Bridge, and we rented a boat. We rented the boat and ended up uh, going out with Danielle. And oh yeah, we got to do some acrobatics on the beach, hadn't done that in a while. They're both very talented flyers. Uh, Katie is a Cirque du Soleil performer who unfortunately is not working because Cirque du Soleil is not happening at the moment. Um, this is our boat we rented. We went out, we played, we jumped off the boat, we swam. And then the, oh yeah, the Backyard World Championship was happening. Carl Sabe ended up beating everybody. Courtney to Walter, well done, good job. She's awesome. She prevailed over Harvey in the US uh, and in Belgium, Carl and uh, ended up kicking everyone's butt, going 75 hours, I think. Um, went for a run the next day and we took off going back to, uh, we ended up back with Tony um, visiting in Las Vegas and uh, back to LA. So in LA, we ended up meeting again with Tony's family, going out rock climbing. We went out to eat. Uh, we took out the Alvis, which is Gary's old car. We drove around. Uh, we visited a cat shelter that uh, is run by a friend of ours. We gave the cat some attention. Here's the darling cat with no ears. Look at this one. Look how cute. Good Lord, an earless cat. And then we were back at the rooftop that night hearing a little bit of music with uh, Dusty here. <laughs> such, a, such a treat to be able to see live music during these times. Uh, and then we went back out to uh, Vegas and Indigo had flown back. Danielle and I stayed at a nice place for a night. Then we went to St. George, uh, where we took off and went out rock climbing um, with a, a group, including, it's the second time I've been out at this place, actually. Uh, went out rock climbing with Alec and Danica and uh, my buddy Carrie's daughter, Lucy. We went into uh, a slot canyon called uh, keyhole, which is a little short slot canyon. And then we did Spry Slot Canyon just after that, which was a, a little bit of a longer, more ambitious canyon. 
and <laughs> that canyon that had uh, started off with a real long rappel and dropped us into a place where we had to get wet just a little bit once, but it wasn't so bad. Spry Canyon was a beautiful canyon. We enjoyed that very much. We And I think I, I'll, I have a video of that, which I will share at some point as well. Um, then the next day we went rock climbing in Black Rock, uh, this, this valley outside of St. George. I uh, flew the drone a little bit. Uh, if you look at my Instagram account, there's you can see a drone shot from this whole thing where I, that I edited together. We went for a walk in Snow Canyon. Oh, the next day I went out to Cathedral Gorge, which was a very cool place. This is like one of the most, most interesting landscapes I've seen and so accessible. There's all these caves and tiny little slots and things you could walk through, run through. I was by myself most of the time, so it was kind of hard to take... Uh, pictures, but I did set up to do a couple of them in places that were particularly spectacular or where the lighting was just amazing. So if if I if I could get it, like I get a shot like this, where I've got it down, I've got to run, set the timer, go up and take the picture. Um, it's one of the struggles when I do things on my own, I can't take good pictures. And as you can see, I like pictures. Uh, we're still in October here, so September and October, probably seven weeks into our our trip. Headed back out with a couple of my friends, Carrie and another Carrie, so three Carries. We went down to um, do a quick day trip to Thunder River, which is down near the bottom of the Grand Canyon on the North Rim. And we ended up visiting, going into... Uh, this so this is a cliff that goes up another I don't know thousand feet and this waterfall right here is a 200 foot waterfall that comes out of a tiny hole in the in the in the cliff wall and we wanted to get up and into it which we ended up doing and then we were able to so we got into the cliff we went about half mile back in these caves on the way out we were able to rappel down the waterfall on the way back which is pretty special as well and then we hiked out it was a long day started out it was nine degrees fahrenheit so that's about negative maybe 15 celsius and by the time we got out it was very cold once again the next day went out with um one of carrie's work work friends bryce he has this amazing super capable jeep rock crawler jeep so we went out and we were able to uh basically hit some things that you probably shouldn't be able to drive a vehicle up but we could flew the drone a bit which was kind of nice the next day went out and did a multi-pitch route with a new friend colton uh, i saw some petroglyphs on the way in and we did a route here called led by sheep which is a five pitch route uh, leading you to a place and that's the view from the top of the place it's just Dr. Seussville it's amazing um, and we didn't see any mountain sheep up there but they were definitely that's definitely their terrain oh my gosh this is a longer one than I thought so if you're still with me you are awesome um, so we ended up there for another day or two I went back to Vegas quickly and then down to Phoenix and Scottsdale, where I visited my buddy Scott, went to a Halloween party. I didn't have a costume, but I did have a headlamp and I did have a hotel room lampshade. So this was my costume for the evening's festivities. Um, the next day I took off to go north uh, to, so drove from Scottsdale, about 13 hour drive to hit Davis, visited my friend's Mox there, and the next morning went to Thunder Hill, which is a racetrack an hour and change north of Sacramento to meet some motorcycling friends, uh, including Scott, who I'd seen in, in, in Reno, and got out on the track with a bunch of folks. Um, this is the Warhorse bike here, the one that I rode, that uh, my buddy Jeff sort of keeps on hand, and he's got a garage there. These are some of the crew here. Got a garage there and has my leathers there. So 
able to go out and get on track. If you, I don't know if you know or not, I used to be a motorcycle journalist and I have ridden motorcycles a lot. Maybe not quite a million miles, but pretty close. Uh, there's my full tilt leathers right there. Nice to break those out and actually put them to use for a while. Um, that evening went for a run with my buddy Mox again back in Davis and we spent the next day um, in in Davis playing pickleball, hanging out with some friends who have, my friends mock, they got olive in the backyard, we picked pomegranates, they got chickens, went for a good run around town and then went out to Lafayette to visit my friend Justin here and Justin uh, we, I stayed with for a day and a half. We had a nice meal with him and his family. Went out at that point to Treasure Island, met my buddy Benny, and he wanted to share with me this toy he got, which is a uh, electric powered hydrofoil that you stand on like a surfboard. And got to play with that quite a bit till I could actually figure out how to use it. And then started to cruise around and this is this is kind of the thing that you end up getting on and it just goes through the water remarkably quickly so got to try that which was a super fun toy lots of pictures of that and spent a bit more time with Justin we went for a hike around the reservoir then got back in the car and drove directly down to the Grand Canyon again and met my friend Mox his friend Arben and his son George, and we went down again into the Grand Canyon, a long hike down, and we ended up visiting Deeks Canyon, or Deer Canyon, Deer, Deer Lake. Um, bit of a rough go down. We played on rocks on the way down. We visited this slot canyon, which was pretty remarkable. Visited a place called the Throne Room, where they've got all these rock chairs made and some petroglyphs. Uh, we hung out down at the very bottom. We jumped off, here's a good one, a Colton jumping off his backflip shot right into the Colorado. Um, there's the whole crew up in front of uh, Deer Creek Falls that goes right down at the Colorado, the bottom of the Grand Canyon. And then we hiked on. The next day we went up to uh, to Pete's Canyon. So Colton and I were still hiking in the dark and went to investigate a cave that we found. Uh, we didn't have quite enough time to get out where we needed to go, but it is a place I will go back to. There will also be a video of this adventure that you will see at some point. Um, we found a balloon that had flown all the way from Mexico, so trash from Mexico. These balloons, when you let them go, the Mylar balloons, go forever and just litter. I find them in places in the most remote areas. Um, went back up, we did, this is the cave again with a river through it. We were able to go in there and spend a bit of time. There's the registry, which is probably half mile, two thirds of a mile back in the cave system. Uh, rappelled down, hiked out and drove back um, to St. George. On the way out, we stopped at this little roadside travertine fall system. Uh, I forgot the name of it, but it's a it's a beautiful place to go and visit and fairly warm creek that comes out even though the weather was cool and you can sort of climb this waterfall. Uh, back to the Pinball Hall of Fame, found the cat there. Pinball Hall of Fame, by the way, the guy who runs it, a guy named Tim or Shaggy, is from East Lansing, the same place I grew up. And he had a pinball parlor there called Pinball Pete's, which I basically grew up at. So I got a direct connection to the Pinball Hall of Fame. Um, after that, I drove back down to Scottsdale. So this is, this is why on my timeline, it is just looking like I'm going everywhere because I'm pretty much am going in there. Phoenix, Sacramento, north of Sacramento, back to Vegas, back over to Phoenix, back up to Utah. So that's why it's all zipping back and forth like this. Um, so I spent a couple days with my sweetie, in who I love very much, in Scottsdale. They had an art festival, light festival going on there, which I was able to check out. Um, I went on a run to out to um, Weaver's Needle, 
which is this formation here. This is my birthday, actually, November 11th. So we are, what, nine weeks in into the adventure right now. And I'm still going, trying to fit as much as I possibly can in. Because I know for two weeks, I got to sit still when I get back. So there was very little sitting still um, after that point. Uh, went out to dinner with some other friends, had a birthday Zoom call, uh, went out for a bicycle ride the next day and met my buddy, <laughs> Aaron or Enki, who has this character that he, it's like the most, it's the coolest, I don't know if I want to call it a costume, but art project that I think you you could ever have. Saw him out at Burning Man last time, but saw him in Scottsdale here, who came out for the Light Festival, which was kind of neat. Uh, the next day I drove out, my wife took off, I went up, went by the Toadstool park on the way up to St. George, ended up back in St. George where we of course immediately got a bunch of gear together and met with some friends, Tom, Alec, and Lucy and Bonnie came and we climbed that same led by sheep route. They wanted to get some multi-pitch climbing experience in, so we did that. That evening we took off and went to uh, Capitol Reef to do a slot canyon the next day. We stayed in Carrie's motorhome, the five of us, and the next morning got up bright and early and got down to the, the start of the canyon, which is probably one of the most interesting, tight, crazy canyons I'll ever find in my life. Dropping in is a very remote place to drop into and you encounter these constrictions that are so tight, you can't actually fit through them. So you have to climb over them. Bonnie, who weighs in about 95 pounds, can just fit through some of these. And sometimes even she can't fit through. So she would kind of wedge her way through. Everybody else would climb up over the top if they could. Uh, and sometimes it was just barely, barely fitting. Like Alec just getting, gets through this thing here. Um, so it was actually, it was, it, was, it was so interesting trying to get through this, this terrain. So here's a shot, me looking down. I'm probably 15, 20 feet up. Tom's trying to fit through. He's a little smaller than me. And I'm looking down thinking, okay, I just got to keep moving and uh, get, get beyond. And then it's, 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 it's it's, there'll be a little video of this as well. It's called Pandora's Box, this canyon. And man, it is the tightest one I've been in. It's tight for a long time. So even some of the rappels are just so challenging to take off from because you're wedged into something that's so tight, it's almost inconceivable that you can get through. Like this is Tom setting up the rappel for the next one. And he can't, he's, a, he's not a, I think he comes in at about 145 pounds and he, has to get sideways to get through just to the, the opening of that one. Um, so we all survived that, had a fantastic experience, came out, played with all the ice that was down at the bottom, breaking off icicles and whatnot, hiked out at night and I said goodbye to them, went to Park City, Utah, visited another friend of mine from high school. Uh, briefly, we chatted in the morning quickly, hung out with her cat for a few minutes and then took off to visit Mike again, <laughs> this time in Logan, Utah. We went for a run, his pyramids run, which gave us some beautiful vistas. He'd been out of the Colorado Trail for quite some time and was feeling a little bit better. He's got some exciting things planned for next year. I know uh, they're going to be kind of cool, including a long 48-hour treadmill zonk he's going to do at some point. Then I went to Boise, visited my buddy Dax and his family again. They just moved there recently, went for a run uh, on the Watchman Trail one day, visited a cave. Uh, they were doing some private dancing lessons, visited with uh, someone who was visiting. Uh, Amy, and then we went for another run the next day and a little bit of boba tea and some some fries so i actually hadn't really spent that much time in boise liked it very much then took off and visited my friend doug again who i started the adventure with in portland and this was november 18th i arrived at his place we uh his, his place burned down so they're 
building. He's got a couple trailers living in. We went out for a run. Um, uh, Ox, Oxbow Park, I think it's called. And had a nice time running through there. Uh, did some work on his house to distress some wood. Did some shooting with his, uh, his, his arsenal that next day. And had a pretty remarkable time with the, like, I'm surprised how accurate these, these things are. Played some Frisbee golf on his property, went for another run the next day along the Sandy River, had a couple good workouts in the gym. Uh, then I came home and this was the cat that my daughter got. So that is pretty long-winded. Um, oh my God, almost an hour. <laughs> if anybody gets to the end of this, leave a comment because it'll be a miracle and I salute you 100%. So that is living life pretty much full tilt. So that was eight, nine, 10. It's like just under, just under 11 weeks. And the ground that we covered or that I covered was considerable. I think I drove somewhere in the neighborhood of 5,000 some odd miles and visited a lot of different places, spent a lot of time outdoors. So again, if you are curious and you enjoyed that, leave a comment below, give me a thumbs up, subscribe. You can jump onto my Strava if you like, there'll be a link down there. And if you wanna support directly, Patreon works for content providers like me. It's a bit of a blessing and a miracle. So um, let's see, I'm gonna flip back here to this and say uh, thanks for your attention, your patience. Again, this one's a little bit more of an experiment. Someone asked me to do this, so I did. I wouldn't normally just say, hey, here's all the stuff, but I'm sitting in on the 10th day of my quarantine where I haven't left my apartment in Vancouver. So I've been doing a little bit of video editing. You'll see some of those coming up and I've got projects galore that I have not done yet. So actually I'll drag this over here and go give you a quick tour of the projects that, so here are the ones that I've still got to do. Virgin River Kayak, Crabtree Falls and Spy Rock, Dead Sea Park Run, Bishop and Deacon Peaks, a fail in the Grand Canyons, a Beck Trail Dam Mountain Short, a uh, thing in Oahu, uh, island on the island point, a mid island run, Coyote Canyon, that's a quick one, Three Chiefs and Slahaney Peak, Bear Mountain and Sedona, Winter Rim to Rim to Rim, Grand Canyon. I know there's some uh, folks who'd like to see that, and I think I will get that one done sooner rather than later. Uh, Bartolome in the Galapagos, a Monserrate Bogota hike, Haynes Valley, Engelstead Canyon, that's a slot canyon, Pacing Dax in the Bigfoot 200, that was earlier this year, Kolob Slot Canyon, a massive slot canyon, Multnomah Falls and Devil's Rest with Doug, Adams Peak, Shripada, guess what? I just put that one out so I can cross that out, so no longer. Uh, run in Doha, Qatar, cruise ship 50 miler, I don't know if I'll ever be able to do that one, I had a 50 mile run on a cruise ship, around, 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 but I think the footage got lost as my backpack was stolen. Mexico and I had the footage on that. I don't think it'll show up again. Uh, Little Santa Anita Canyon with Alec and Bonnie, Patton and Needles, Eaton Canyon, Vancouver 100, Coney Bear, Echo Lake, Monmouth Canyon Run, House Sound Crest with the group, St. Mark's Camping with Indigo, Needles Traverse, Elsie Lake Circumnavigation with Pat, Sky Pilot Traverse with Pat. I'm, I'm doing that one right now, so this one should be out in a week or so. Uh, ben Lomond bike and photo hunt with Pat. Sax Fridge, Cassiope, Valentine Lake with Pat. How Sound Crest Trail Group 2020. Uh, Capilano Mountain Peak Bagging, Black Tusk Garibaldi with Indigo and others. Uh, Ellie and one of Indigo's friends, Magdalena. Uh, Grand Canyon Thunder River with the three carries, Pandora's Box Capital Reef Slot. Grand Teton with Sam and the other carry. Burning Man 50K Ultra, that one's being put together. That one's actually edited, but submitted to an art festival. Timberline Trail, that's being edited right now as well. You'll see that soon. Deer Creek, Upper Tapeats and Thunder River with Mox and family. Colorado Trail FKT with Mike. Elk Hunting the Chain Mountains and the Conundrum Hot Springs Aspen. Those are all videos that I need to edit together. It just takes time to get it done. So patient support, I'd love to get it. 
and I will wrap up, I think, there. So once more, thanks so much for your uh, patronage. Thanks for your attention. A little bit of a different video. I'm not sure it's your cup of tea. A peek into my life living full tilt. All right. Love you guys. Carry out.